Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and Marta again. <laughs> And this is You've Got Five Options. We are recording in the radio uh, on Fridays. And uh, unfortunately, this Friday, Anna is recovering from her surgery. So she cannot be here with us today. She's fine. You don't need to worry. She's okay. She's just recovering. And that's why she's not here with us. Today in the studio, uh, luckily I'm not alone because you would guys probably get really tired of me, but I'm not alone. I am here with Lesse, Hi. <laughs> our technician, and uh, also very often our co-host, but you never know that it's a joker. And then we have our lovely guest, Edita. Hi. So we are discussing the five scenarios for choosing between your heart and your wallet. And this is the second part of this series. We have discussed in the first episode the five important things to consider when you need to choose between the heart and the wallet. And you can find that episode on You've Got Five Options in YouTube. So you just need to type in You've Got Five Options to your YouTube. You can also find it at our website, which is the five options.com and five as a number the five options.com it was a really great episode where both Edita and Lesse has shared some really deep and beautiful thoughts with us here guys so I really recommend you to be able to go and listen to the first part and today we will be discussing the five scenarios for choosing between heart and the wallet so this will be a pretty pragmatic discussion. So the five scenarios are scenario one, you just follow the wallet. You have to earn money. You need a lot of money and you decide, okay, I'm just following where the money goes. The second scenario is you just follow the heart. You are basically like, okay, I don't care about the money. My heart is just jumping in one direction and I'm just following my heart and that's it. And then scenario number three, you try to balance both. Scenario number four, you do your wallet day job and you do your heart project as a hobby. Or scenario number five, you do your heart as a day job, so to speak. So even though maybe there is not so much money right now, but you decide to go full speed with your uh, heart project and you are just, uh, you know, using as few time as possible to earn some money for basic survival. So this is the five scenarios and we are going to discuss them a little bit. So the first scenario where you are just following the money. So Edita, have you ever been in this situation where you felt this way? Damn, no. I'm in this job <laughs> and I'm just, you know, following the money. I always tried to, to find, uh, even if it was a work in corporation, something that I liked about the job. For example, that it was a job in English because it was one of the companies was American company. So it was for me the wallet and that I can work in international environment. Uh, so that's my answer. So you have never found yourself in that situation where you are just following the wallet? I usually I'm, I'm the biggest fan of the third option that you try to balance it. And I know a lot of examples of uh, other people that are also going this way. And I am more the person who always try to make a wallet like a basic but always do something if it's a side that it's totally your hobby so in my life i had a situation that i was for example starting the day at 3 a.m working just for a wallet to have some amount of money then i was going to the job that was my total heart and hobby and then i was also doing some extra things just to, like i said i'm crazy and i'm sometimes workaholic but it's like i was trying to to have it both always what about you, Lesa? Have you ever been in this situation where you would just be somewhere to earn the money? I mean, yeah, I've, I've had, uh, you know, some student jobs. I just needed the money. So 
yeah to the marketing yeah, <laughs> like I have, yeah i have done that i was delivering newspapers yeah, in the yeah, middle yeah, of yeah. the night i was doing that just for the money i yeah, was washing the dishes but on the other hand of course i was uh, paying my education and i was mm. hoping that this will be at some point something that will be connected with my heart not just trying to do that so that I can have the study, so that I can have the money. Mm. But it is, I have been doing that, and it is tough to do something when it's only for the money. The most also uh, important thing is that we have a limited time. The day is short, and if you are doing something only for a wallet, that can be also no time for something that you really love and what you should do. And the life is short, so you should do what you love. Whenever, you know, we are discussing these different types of scenarios uh, or options in You've Got Five Options, we are always open to the fact that people are different and there are some people that could choose this kind of scenario. So thinking about just following the wallet and thinking what could be the possible pros of that, I am thinking that the possible pro could be that your life is quite simple. You have this job from, I don't know, eight to four or nine to five that you go there, you earn your money. Of course, you can think about any most meaningful way you can spend your time there, but you can basically close the door of the office and you can forget about what it was and you can just be there, for example, for your family, which is hard. So, okay, then you earn the money so that you can in your free time do the hard. But at least the job part, the career part, you only do that for the wallet. I don't care about career development right now. I just need the money for basic survival of my family. And I don't want to have to worry and think about work after work. So I just do that. So that was, for example, a scenario that came to my heart. What do you think about that? It's very reasonable. There are a lot of people who are living this way. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the second scenario as we apparently here at the studio are not very much into just wallet solution. (laughs) But we can see that it can be a good solution for some people or it could be a good solution for a certain part of your life. Like when you, for example, have very small children and you want to have as much time as possible and as much mental space as possible because I think that is the biggest thing when you are following your heart. It takes a lot of your mental space. It's not something that you can just stop thinking about and be fully, you know, with your children. I mean, of course you can. You can almost everything. But it's extremely, extremely difficult to to train your brain in this way. So let's move to that second scenario where you you have this amazing passion project, something where your heart is just almost jumping out of your breast to go there. And you are just, you know, like, screw it. I don't care about the money. I will survive. If I need to, I will live in my mom's house for a while, but I will follow my heart completely. Have you guys ever been in this situation? Yes. Tell us, Edita. And I think that this is for me the only way to live. Because when you follow your heart, you can feel fulfillment. And you were saying a lot about fulfillment in your previous chapters. Yeah. So tell me, Edita, how was it that you were like, did you have like a moment? Okay, I'm just, you know, quitting my job and just, you know, following my heart. Have you ever had this kind of moment? It's like I never was and I never advise anybody to quit your job and uh, go and make your dreams come true. I always was advising people to prepare the ground so you can jump with a parachute. But I always was advising that do it. Just do it, and uh, if you it's, if it costs something, and if you have to ask for help your family or friends, just do it because this is the only way for me to live. That you will find something that you really love, and this is your true call. Okay, great. What about you, Lesie? You seem to be right now at this moment. I think you actually literally said that in the previous episode. Just fuck it. I'm following my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not quite like that. I guess there's yeah, something in that way. Yeah. Well, I, I just also what you mentioned earlier about following the wallet. I mean, people are different, like you said. And I definitely also know people that it's important to them to make a good living. And of course it is. There's also freedom in having money. I would also like to have more money. I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I wouldn't like, but it's just not the most important f- thing for me right now. But for some people, like a uh, career earning a a good living it's maybe important to them and that's a freedom for them you know 
that can give them the freedom to go travel more or whatever it is they want to do. And that's cool. You know, uh, I'm not here to tell people what to do with their life. They know themselves. So that's for some people, maybe that's a kind of fulfillment. I don't know. You know, so. So basically what I wanted to say is, of course, I believe that you can have both. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> you totally can, you know, have your passion project and uh, work for yeah. the thing that your heart is jumping out of your chest <laughs> mm -hmm. to go after it and earn money on that and be successful. Very often, though, it simply requires a lot of courage, dedication and being able to take some risks or very, very hard work to get there. Not Always. for everyone. Not for everyone. It has to be a very hard work. Well, I don't know, you know, guys, I don't want to limit. I don't want to put some limiting beliefs to people like you always <laughs> have to work hard. And uh... no, no, not the work hard, but whenever you do any project. Uh, so there is a point that something is everything is going wrong and that mm. the hard obstacles is on your way. It's like a part of making project and just keep on going. Just follow the track and then they will find you find solutions and just remember to start to do the work in the middle and to finish, to, to make some final result. Yeah, and of course, that's basically something that the life is about, right? You will find yourself sooner or later at this point of time where you are like, oh man, it sucks, it's tough. And you will have to, you know, either quit because it's too hard or you will have to be, you know, awaken the real fighter and like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put this, you know, five more trials into it or 55 more, whatever. And of course, uh, we all wish that we don't have to be in a situation where we actually have have to choose between the heart and the wallet. But there are situations in life. And I did hear some stories like often from parents, grandparents, where they actually did abandon their passion projects or their hearts to actually earn the money. So it is the situation. It is something that we sometimes do decide, either because we don't believe that we can make it with our passion project, the belief is not strong enough, or we simply uh, feel forced to do that and so on. So it does happen sometimes. Yeah. I would just add that at my work, I meet a lot of people who follow their heart, although their family wanted to them to get a real job. And they, for example, become artists. And it's like, if my kids would come to me and would say, I would love to be a painter, I would probably ask him, go educate yourself and be, get a real job, like because you probably can make a lot of money of painting. But then we got the artists who are making a lot of money of their art yeah so it's very difficult part of consideration for you as a parent so yeah i'm really hoping myself that i will be a mom that will be supporting the children in following the heart but of course being reasonable and thinking also or considering a plan b or a plan c something like that that's basically where i'm looking into getting myself there are also a lot of uh, kids they are going growing up and they are going to choose their study like medicine or lawyer just because their parents wish mm -hmm. them to be one yeah definitely and it's uh, it's sometimes a difficult thing because sometimes we in our educational system are feeling forced to choose the career too soon when we don't yes. know yet. Uh, we are not ready. We've had some discussions about that before uh, here at You've Got Five Options. Uh, so, yeah, but, you know, we right now live something like 70, 80 years. So there is quite a lot of time for us to actually change our careers and follow our hearts in different times of our lives. Yes. And also we are living in the times that sometimes we have to change our career. It's like the third first time we have to see what's going on on the market and sometimes totally change what you're doing. And maybe sometimes this what you do, what you feel today is not for you tomorrow because we grow, we change. Maybe you will find something new that is interesting for you and you should try. Definitely. So in life, we probably get more than one opportunity <laughs> to we be get in, five uh, options. Yeah, we, <laughs> we get at least five opportunities uh, to choose between that. But of course, we will be facing those situations where we at least have to consider whether we choose the wallet An opportunity can come. Someone can come and tell you, look, I have this job for you. Uh, you can earn this and this and this amount of money. And then you have to think about, okay, I have my company. I'm not making any money on my company. Uh, this is my passion project. And do I want to take that job and follow in this way you are following the money? And of course, you can find some meaning. You can find learnings in it and so on. But it is a very, very tough cookie 
when you have to choose between that. That's why if you are in this kind of situation, please listen to the first episode where we were discussing the five important things to consider when you are taking that decision. But now we will move into those three scenarios which are more, they are not so black and white. It's not either or, it's more about balancing. So the scenario number three is you try to balance both. And you were saying, Edita, that this is very much where you are. So I'm tell biggest us. Fan. Yeah. So tell us what you love about that balancing. I love people because it's like it's really hard, like just jump. And especially when you don't have money, it's like not funny because it's really like you it can also have big influence on this, what you are doing, because you are stressed and uh, you are under pressure. And I just lo love when people have uh, this option that they can get ready and be prepared and prepare the ground for something that they really love. And the great example, I had a friend and she is working until now in a corporation eight hours a day and all the things that she's doing. And now she has got a great company and thousands of women that are listening to her. And she's doing this after her work. And for me, this is the my favorite kind of combination that you have got both you have got the wallet and you got the heart I so love to have it all you love to have it all okay so tell us how are you balancing this it's like now I totally went after my heart and so far uh, I'm not a millionaire mm -hmm. but it's like uh, I just keep on doing this what I love and so I choose heart and some wallet is coming and I, I think that with time it will just follow and you can earn on your what you do and on your skills depend on it. So you actually seem to be having the uh, scenario number five where you are mainly following your heart in your day job and then, you know, trying, you know, like basically earning as uh, basically to survive and exactly. looking into this heart project to develop yes. and earn more money. Because also it's like from my experience and what I have done in my life, it's like I could do a job like even in corporation also like you that I could earn much more money just going to this one job like you said from nine to five and not care about anything but just I know that our life is short and when you will go for a compromise that you will do something that you really don't feel like doing that when you when you have an option that you can do something else that you really love you should try it okay Lessa what about you have you been in a situation where you were trying to balance both having some kind of job where you are mainly earning money and having some kind of passion project that you are trying to do in the rest of the time? I don't know if I have like a concrete example and I think editor said it really well, but I want to say something, um, you know, <laughs> what I said previous episode about, you know, fuck it, just go travel. Of course, I, I have a, <laughs> we <I'm>, agree. <laughs> I, I, I mean, a, you know, people also have different life situations. I don't have children. And I'm single at the moment. So, ladies, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Lassa is very no, handsome, no, very cute guy. We recommend Lassa. so amazing no, was with big just heart. Just a joke. That was just a joke. <laughs> but, uh, Write to five options and we will we'll <laughs> no, find no, the perfect no, candidate no. for Lassa. Um, but what I wanted to say is that, of course, that... Uh, you need puts, to like traveling. No, that puts me in a situation where I can go just traveling, you know, where I just can go fuck it because I don't have children and I don't have a significant other at the moment. That would, of course, change the situation and... That what I wanted to say is that you, of course, had to put your own life into perspective, you know, because it changes point. things if you have children. I would assume very much it changes things, you know. So I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. I said something. Girls, yeah. right? To five no, <laughs> no, it was a joke. It oh. was a very good joke, but there is some truth in every joke. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to share a little bit from my perspective because I have been a person that has been trying to balance for some time now. And I have been working uh, in a corporation for more than nine years. And I used to love my job. I used to really love my job. And I didn't feel I needed to have any additional projects done work. I was uh, having my family and I was basically fulfilling my passion at work. I really, I just simply couldn't wait when I go to work and I loved it. So even though it was a corporate job, it was perfectly fine for me and fulfilling, very fulfilling. And I was feeling satisfied with that. And then some time ago, I probably have reached a moment where I was not anymore getting all the growth and development that I have needed in that job. And I have a wonderful manager 
who has been able to support me in a way that I was able to create some time where I could uh, take care of the passion project. You've got five options. Uh, so, you know, guys, and uh, now I also started a new passion project, which is called Spirituality for Down to Earth People. And I also have uh, three children and a husband. So I can tell you guys that even if you have a very supportive, uh, significant other, and if you have a very supportive manager, this balancing can be quite challenging because the day has only 24 hours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so basically what I wanted to say, it's, uh, it's great to try to balance things but it is actually difficult to keep it in balance, meaning that you also have to sleep. So uh, I would like to say that balancing can be very challenging as well. It is actually an art to be able to balance those things and keep yourself in balance. For yeah. me, for example, it's very hard to switch off. Like I'm missing that I'm not like a, that you can put your phone to the charger at night. Like sometimes I'm so excited. I have so many things in my head that I just can't switch on. And then there is like hour go by hour. And then, you know, you have to wake up mm. next morning. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, that's hard to keep the balance. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And basically what my belief is right now is that you have to first Balance yourself. You have to be in balance with yourself so that you can balance the, these other things. Because no matter where you are in your life, uh, I mean, whether you have a lot of kids, few kids, no kids yet, or if you want to travel, be single or have a job or not and follow your heart. Anyway, <laughs> you'll have to be balancing something. So basically, my belief right now is as long as you are able to keep yourself in balance, you will be able to balance those other things. So that's always the first thing. Keep yourself in balance. Lasse, did you want to no, share no, something? No, I'm just listening. I, I, I agree. <laughs> okay, you agree. What do you how think can you do this? What's your advice as a new spiritual to down to earth? So basically, yeah, my advice is uh, to have rituals. That's something that really, really works. Some people can call it routines. I don't like the word routine that much. Uh, I like the word ritual. And this is very, very important for me and in keeping myself because you could hear, guys, I do balance a lot of, I do try to keep loads of things in balance. So basically to keep myself sane, I have set up for myself a morning ritual and an evening ritual. And when I follow those rituals, when I wake up in the morning and I do a short meditation and then I have this special time with my children where I connect with my children and we are having this breakfast together. So I wake up earlier, especially so that I don't have to rush them through the morning, but that we can actually have a nice breakfast together. It keeps me grounded because it keeps me me sane because I had my meditation and then I can also be there for my children and I can connect with them which also helps me to keep my motherhood in balance so that's like super important for me and then I have my cup of coffee my cup of coffee is so important to me this is my beautiful ritual that keeps me sane in all the time And then evening ritual in order not to be like this phone that is, you know, all the time. Ringing. What's your advice? Yeah. So basically one hour before going to sleep, no phone. I totally put away the phone, the computer and so on. And I have my evening uh, ritual where I take my cup of tea because coffee is not a good uh, <laughs> evening ritual. But I take my cup of tea. I do a list of the things that I need to do the next day so that I empty my head so that I don't have this, you know, 155 points that I need to do the next day running in my head. But I write it down. And as soon as I write it down, I know. It will be taken care of tomorrow, so I don't need to, you know, spin it inside my head. And then I read a book. So that's my evening ritual. And if I do those two rituals, I am in balance and I can balance those things. If I let go and I don't do them, I get out of balance. So it is basically for me... Either I do it and I am in balance and my family is in balance and my work life is in balance or I don't and then it's chaos. Beautiful advice. <laughs> I will follow. <laughs> you are very welcome. I really, really do recommend. The other scenarios that we've had were also basically about some kind of a balance because scenario number four was where you try to do your wallet day job and then your heart as a hobby. And have you guys been in a situation trying this one out? 
like having this job. Okay, there is nothing for me in that job. I'm just doing it for money. And then you have your passion project. Yeah, yeah, I did it many times. How did you feel? That I do this for purpose, that I need to do this to reach my goal. And that's the part of making my dreams come true. Has this happened for you? Have you been able to to get that dream? Yeah, okay. always, because my focus was always uh, to to do this, what is the most important for you. Even if it, it would take that you need to do one or two extra jobs that is not your passion, that is only for the money. So uh, I could hear in you always like, yes, I did it. And it was the purpose that was driving you. Am I? Yes, exactly. It's this well? motivation. Why you start every day and what 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 is your higher goal? So if you are guys in this situation where you have to do some day wallet job, keep your purpose, you know, clear. Maybe the job is not fun. Maybe you are not seeing there much more than wallet. But then, you know, have your purpose in your mind clear and straight. And that will make it easier exactly. for you. And also, I think that everything what you do in life takes time. Everything that is worth to do in your life takes time. It's a process. So sometimes to get somewhere where you want, like, for example, when you want to make a movie, it's like it's not happening in one day. You have to prepare so many things and you have to learn so many things. And it they can take one year. It can take five years. But as long as you have your goal clear, you will get there. Okay. what about you, Lesa? Have you been in this situation and you have do you have any tips for our listeners? Oh, I don't have so that thoughtful tips <laughs> like that <laughs> i mean i've been in a situation of course where i had a job that was just for money but i was lacking the passion part so i just did the money part and it sucked <laughs> you because know because we need fulfillment yeah exactly uh but that was again it everything goes back for me to you know the 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 kind of inner struggles that i've had you know that i didn't believe in myself so i just had a job and i didn't know what the fuck i wanted to do so it's just the money part and nothing else Mm. And that's kind of why it's a big reason why I needed to change mm. and do something drastic, which I've slowly <laughs> been doing over the last few years. And now I'm taking the, the next big step, just moving to a different country. You know what, Lesse? You are an inspiration. It's really uh, you beautiful. Are. Yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I don't know. Thank yeah, you. Sure. And then the last scenario, which is you try to do your heart as a day job and then, you know, you do the money whenever you, you can in the meantime, when your passion job starts bringing you money. So you have shared with us previously, Edita, that this is what you've been yeah, kind also, of yes. uh, doing. So do you have any tips how to survive that tough <laughs> period when your heart is fulfilled, but your wallet is not filled? <laughs> yes, for, uh, for me, it was like I, I always had like family and friends. <laughs> and that's the only answer I got. So. This is what helps you survive. The yes, family you need friends. people. You need people in your life who believe in you and who will be there for you when you need it. Okay, that's true. that's definitely true. Do you guys have any final tips or thoughts to share with our listeners when it comes to how much are you willing to give or I how much are you willing to give up? Give it all in and go this extra mile and do whatever you can to fulfill your real dream. So give it all you have. And now, lesson. Oh, man. Follow your heart. It's the only thing you got, I think, at the end of the day. So when you have to choose between your heart and your wallet, Lesse says, follow your heart. Edita? Uh, always to combine it. And also, for me, it's important that to remember to not think only with your wallet, to not be like Scrooge. To think also about other people what also I know that Lasse and Marta are supporting a lot of projects also financially so think about also yourself but also about other people around you yeah. okay so that has been two episodes of a series where we have been discussing the things to consider and the different scenarios when it comes to choosing between the heart and the wallet Thank you so much, Lesse, for sharing your story and your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Edita, for sharing your story and your thoughts. And thank you, all the listeners. Bye. 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 You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges.
remember that you can visit our website the5options.com where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks! <laughs>